June is Trauma Awareness Month or PTSD Awareness Month. PTSD is short for post-traumatic stress disorder. And in honor of PTSD month, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to do a video on spiritual PTSD. This is a very underserved topic. This is a topic that has little to no recognition. And I wanted to bring a little more recognition to it today in my way to hopefully contribute to the awareness and raising awareness for spiritual PTSD. Because so many of us, so many people, I suspect in the hundreds of thousands to millions of people are walking around with spiritual PTSD. And many people have been either a member of a cult or adjacent to a cult in some way, maybe through a family member or someone they're dating and have been affected. And this is something that part of my work is dedicated to is demystifying this idea of a cult and taking this, this weird stigma off of it and also bringing awareness to this concept of spiritual trauma. And I'm going to get into that in this video about some very real, hopefully tangible ways that this manifests itself. And without further ado, we're going to, we're going to begin. So we'll start with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's a cluster of symptoms after one experiences a traumatic event or series of events. And one traumatic event that most people don't realize is a traumatic event is being a part of a cult or an abusive church. Because most people think, well, if it's a problematic church, then just leave and go to another one. But when you realize what a cult is, when you realize that a group can function exactly the same way as a narcissistic partner would, then it makes more sense. Now we're talking about spiritual post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. So what are symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder? Here's a couple of them. Reliving. We relive experiences from the traumatic event. And example of that are flashbacks, having nightmares, and haunting memories. Another one is hyperarousal. That, that means like having difficulty sleeping, being jumpy, easily scared, having issues concentrating, panic attacks, sweating, pain, trembling, feeling like you're having a nervous breakdown, your nervous system is fried and it's literally shutting down on you. You may feel like you're having a heart attack and it, and it may turn out to be panic attacks. Then there's avoidance. That can be avoiding reminders of the trauma you experienced or lived through. It could be avoiding the emotions associated with it. We often compartmentalize or we take those, those, those trauma, the trauma, the emotions from the trauma that are related to it or caused by it. And we, we hide it away. And this often is a side note. This is also key for many cult survivors because 
what you experience in a cult is so taboo. It's so forbidden. It, it's not understood by the people around you. It's not understood by society as a whole. Being in a cult, is, you're stigmatized as being foolish or gullible or dumb, or you know, you you question yourself, your sanity. What's wrong with me? Why did I get suckered into this group? And and so we can avoid that part of us that was damaged by the cult or the abuse of church. And so we avoid those emotions, which is why, and this goes into avoiding thoughts, avoiding thoughts and avoiding emotions related to the trauma with the cult. We, we hide it away, we suppress it rather. And we can suppress it for many years after leaving. And it's not uncommon for someone to say when presented with this type of information for the first time to scratch their head and go, I haven't really thought about the cult in years, but something caused it to resurface and they end up finding a video like this because it doesn't go away, but it's buried deep within you. You have to survive. You have to move on with your life. And because it's, it's stigmatized and misunderstood. You you hide it to survive. Lastly is mood and function. That can manifest itself as memory problems. A lot of trauma you go through is buried deep in the subconscious mind. You can't even remember half the stuff because your, your mind is trying to protect you. So a lot of the trauma, you may experience it in your physical body, but your mind may not have memories. It may even feel like a form of amnesia, feeling detached. Disassociation is common with PTSD. You, in order to survive, this is about survival and to survive this trauma you may disattach from your body, disattach from your emotions, disassociate and form different parts of yourself. Emotionally being numb. This is also survival because the pain is so great that a lot of times we just numb ourselves. Some people may do it with, with drugs or sex or, or, other kinds of behaviors, while others may develop eating disorders or or there's a, a list of things that it could be in, in each individual's life that they will use to, to numb themselves so that that pain and the discomfort of the trauma they've lived through does not consume them. Guilt. A lot of guilt. PTSD is this tons of survivor's guilt that you deal with. And with spiritual abuse, you get out of a cult. There is this sense of guilt over different things. And especially if it's a religious Christian cult, there's a lot of this, this idea of sin and feeling like we're in sin, that we've left God, that we've left the way, the right path. And also guilt for abuses we may be inflicted onto other members while we were a part of the group. You know, being suspicious, struggling with trusting people because our trust was so manipulated and we were betrayed so, so much in many cases. And just, just being recruited into a cult is, is enough to make you suspicious of the world around you and in learning to, to build trust again in a healthy sense while having boundaries. You know, a deep sense of sadness. We may not even realize we're sad. We may feel angry. We may feel rage. We may feel suicidal. And a lot of that is our sadness overtaking cult, the cult survivor. 
being irritable or anxious. Anxiety is a huge sign of PTSD. When you have chronic anxiety, when you have panic attacks, when if you see a member of the group, whether it's on, on the internet or if it's in person, that you start to hide or run or to feel afraid, to feel threatened. Anxiety about the future, anxiety about where you're going to spend eternity, depending on the belief system of the cult, you know, what they indoctrinate into you. They, they make you afraid of the world. They make you afraid of yourself, that you don't trust yourself, that you can't make your own decisions. So this anxiety is, is very intense, it's very real, and it is a symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder. Let's talk about triggers. Oftentimes, when, when we talk about PTSD, the most accepted expression of that is the war veteran that comes home from the war. And we're pretty much assimilated or we're, we're comfortable with that, that imagery, I think, at least to some degree, more than, than the spiritual PTSD. But PTSD traditionally is seen as what happens when when someone who's a soldier is in war, has experienced much trauma, returns home, and they are they're trying to adjust to civilian life again, and they're having these 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 triggers. So everyone can has even seen, witnessed a member of their family or on TV in the movie, the soldier that comes home and they, there's a movie called Dead Presidents. Uh, it, it, I think it's a classic movie in my opinion. And it's about these soldiers that go to war, um, these African-American soldiers and they come home and, and essentially the movie is about PTSD in reality of how these soldiers are adjusting to civil life after being in, you know, at war and, and killing people and, and living through that. And so you'll see the, 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 the army vet who hears firecrackers going off on the 4th of July and they jump out of their skin and, and they completely lose it because that sound of the firecrackers takes them, it's a flashback to the sounds of machine gun bullets in, in, you know, in, in the jungle when they were, they were fighting or over wherever they were or at war. Now that is something you can tangibly wrap your mind around, but then when it comes to spiritual PTSD, people don't seem to understand this. And for anyone who has spiritual PTSD, you may not realize it yet that you are a survivor of a cult, especially, you know, a cult church. This is a real thing, just like the soldier who hears the firecrackers go off and thinks it's bullets flying, they are triggers for, for cult survivors exactly the same way. The triggers are different though. It's not a firecracker. It's, it's a word. It's a word being said. Um, it's a specific word that in the cult they used to use. And cults use something called loaded language. Loaded language are specific everyday terms that the cult takes and they use within the group that only other group members understand the meaning of. So it's insider language. And those words are trigger words. And after you leave the cult, hearing those words 
has that same effect where it can cause you to have heart palpitations. You could start sweating. You could start having flashbacks to the past. Your body will start having this visceral reaction. Your emotions may completely turn dark. You may shut down. A host of things can start happening to you because you have, as a cult survivor, PTSD. You were traumatized and certain words used in the cult are triggering it again. Let's talk about some common ways spiritual trauma activates. So as I said, specific words or phrases, like the group that I was a part of, I was part of a cult organization. And one of the words they used to use was awesome. And although I can use that word now with no problem, it took me a couple of years in order to get to that place where, you know, anytime I would hear the word awesome or the kingdom or being sold out or the word struggling, these are key words from that particular group I was a part of that would trigger, you know, a PTSD response. Pressuring or forcing, you know, the cult survivor to do something. So this, it can be a trigger as a cult survivor when you're dealing with a pushy salesperson and, and they won't take no for an answer because in the, in the church or it, whatever kind of cult it is, there are no boundaries. You don't get to say no. You don't get to, you know, speak your piece or, or put a boundary there and say, no, I won't do that. Or I can't do that. Or maybe later, everything is by the leaders of the, of the cult. So when someone is, if you find, if someone can find, if you, if you have a loved one that was a cult survivor, understand that they may react or feel a, a specific sense of trigger or of, of trauma when someone is pushing themselves on that, even if it's, it is your spouse, even if it's, it's someone you may have a relationship with. Or it can be that pushy salesperson, like I said. It can trigger that response of being forced to do something that you don't want to do. It's like taking away your power. And, 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 and that power dynamic in the cult of never being allowed to say no, of the narcissistic control of the leaders over you, that it can be a trigger. Another thing is invalidation and gaslighting. It, it can be extremely triggering with your trauma when you have post-traumatic traumatic stress disorder. When someone is invalidating you, when you're trying to open up and share the, what has happened to you. And spiritual trauma is often dismissed, you know, as being church hurt or bitter or you will focus more on man and not on God. You put your trust in man, not in God, specifically with Christian cults. But whatever kind of cult it may be, it's always a put down in terms of you leaving the group. That is something wrong with you, you, you know, that you're disgruntled, that you're jaded, that you're that there's some character flaw in you is why you're saying what you're saying. It's not because you were actually abused and traumatized. That's the message you get with invalidation. And, and that, that can, that, that's part of what can be activate, the tra reactivate the trauma. Being condescending. When people are condescending, it can reactivate trauma. And a way of being condescending is that gaslighting, you know, 
saying you put your trust in the wrong thing. You didn't listen to yourself. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. And in a lot of times when you have survived a cult, you, you, you deal with people who talk down to you, whether it's cult members, they'll talk down to you because they think you're lost. They think that you're less than because you left the group and that, you know, you're inferior in some way, or it's from people who you're sharing it, the experience, it could be with a mental health professional. It can be that there's a lot of scenarios where you're taking a risk opening up and, and sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. And people can come across, even if they don't mean to being condescending because they don't understand. They don't get it. It's like, why would you join that group in the first place? What's the big deal if you run into someone leaving the group? Because they, it, it comes across condescending, like, like, you know, it's like, well, what's the big deal? And it's, it's a major deal. You wouldn't say that to the soldier who returns from the war, you know, and, and they are triggered by hearing, the, like I said, the firecracker, thinking it's, it's bullets or, you know, they're, they're getting into drugs to numb the pain and, and the, the flashbacks. You wouldn't say what's the big deal of being in war and, and, and murdering a village full of children. You would say, no, you would understand. And spiritual PTSD is the same thing. Another way spiritual trauma can activate is being overworked at home, at work, or with a group like, you know, something recreational or, or volunteering. It can activate your trauma because cults are high demand, high control groups, and they demand all of your allegiance, all of your time. You know, they have these demanding schedules and these expectations. So when anything begins to overwhelm you or overburden you with these heavy scheduling expectations and demands, that can be activating your spiritual trauma because the, the cult de demands all of your time and a lot of times you're constantly in meetings, you're constantly doing this and that, and, and they demand that from you. They don't ask it. And when you don't show up to a meeting, they're, you know, they're, they're yelling at you. They're demanding, where have you been? Why aren't you here? They demand your money. It's like, and, and so when you are in other situations, it can trigger it can reactivate that trauma if it's un, un if you're unaware of it you know of of the burden that the cult places on your back and when when there's a group and they say oh are you going to be there this weekend you could feel this sense of resistance like you could you know like avoidance as we said earlier the sense of avoiding groups avoiding commitment avoiding jobs that are too demanding. You know, when your boss wants you to work overtime and then you're not getting more pay, they just want to, they fired this person and then they want you to do your job and their job. You may have a visceral reaction to that. And it may be deeper than just the injustice of it. It may also be the spiritual trauma because that is the kind of things that happens in the cult. And then internal stress. There's so much that you deal with as a cult survivor. There's so many layers to it. And again, this video is, is just a primer. It's by no means all inclusive or exhaustive. So internal stress is, is a general term, but there, there's so much inner conflict that as, as a cult survivor, 
spiritual PTSD, you're, you're having so many, so many inner conflicts going on. You have this voice saying this thing and this part of you saying that thing. And sometimes it can even feel like you just want to cover your ears and scream for everyone to shut up because there, there's something that happens as we, we mentioned earlier, there is a disassociation, a detachment. And sometimes that detachment can, can, can come across as different voices in our head. It's like, as part as a cult member, you have to de detach from yourself to just even survive in the cult. You can't be yourself. You can't speak your truth. You can't say no. You can't, you can't express your personality. You can't have your own opinions. So you compartmentalize and, and you become all these different separate pieces. And, and there's this part of you that can be the cult survivor. There's just, this voice is, is beating you up saying, why did you even get involved in that? How could you fall for that? It's your fault. And, and that part can, you know, is taking on the voice of the cult, is taking on the voice of the narcissistic leader, of the abusers, of the ideology. And then there's this other part of you that, that says something different, that, you know, this other part of you may be more vulnerable. They may be, this part of you may be lonely. This part of you may be in need of community and real friendships and relationships. This other part of you may be saying to yourself to get over it, move past it. Because that voice is very loud in a lot of cult survivors' minds. You know, you're, you're telling yourself, you got to get over it. You got to move past this. You're fine. This is not a big deal. And... And, and that, that voice usually is the loudest because we have to get over it. So we're not quote unquote bitter. We're, you know, we have to show the cult members that we're better than ever, that, we're, you know, we're better, not bitter. We have to prove this to the world. We have to prove it to the cult. We have to show that we haven't fallen off since we left that, you know, we need to prove them wrong. And so you've got that voice, you know, there's a lot of different voices, a lot of different things that since in a cult, you're indoctrinated with black and white absolute thinking, it's either this or that, it can't be both. You, you can have this, this battle of, of binary thinking because you have to engage in cognitive dissonance on some level to, to be a part of a cult. And so that cognitive dissonance manifests itself with these, you know, is, is that internal stress, it causes internal stress where you're sorting out, what do you believe? Do you believe the ideology anymore or do you not? And there's all these different parts of you that it can feel like just this tug of war inside of you as you're figuring yourself out and life out and just the existential crisis. Now the existential crisis is one, it's, it's too much to unpack in one video and it might look a little different for different people, but existential crisis is where you're questioning reality. You're, you're, it's like philosophy, right? Where you're, you're looking at, you know, you're having a crisis of, of belief. A lot of times you leave a, a cult and you don't know if you believe that anymore or what you even believe in anymore. Who am I? What is my purpose? Why am I here? Why do I want to be here? Is God real? Is anything real? I mean, this is the existential crisis that we face, especially the purpose of life. And cults 
give us a purpose. They give their members a purpose and they tell you what that purpose is. It's easily packaged in a mission statement. But when you leave the cult, you leave that purpose behind. And now there's a void. And the existential crisis comes because there's so many voids after leaving a cult that need to be filled or are, are sitting empty. And there's a saying that says, nature abhors a vacuum, which means there is no such thing as there's no space, that all space will get occupied by something. So you remove something from it and something else will take its place. And when you remove the belief system of the cult, it's like, well, what is the next thing? What is going to be the belief system? You're what you believe in. And what is your purpose? What is their purpose? Do you believe in the purpose anymore? I mean, this is the existential crisis that so many cult survivors go through alone because you can't really share it with other people because they don't get it or they're not in the place where they're really thinking about these, these higher concepts, these deep concepts. A lot of people are just trying to make it through the day or they're just focused on this small aspect of reality in their own little world. And they don't really want to get all deep like that. And the existential crisis can also be suicidality, having suicidal ideations. Because you start thinking about the all of these things, you, you can start feeling like there's no reason to live. There's no purpose. And, and so this is, this is a part of this existential crisis that so many cult survivors face as far as spiritual PTSD goes, that after this trauma, this traumatic experience, figuring out where, where they, where they are in the universe. And, and that's, this huge. That's it for today. Thank you for getting to the end of the video. If you care to do so, please like, comment, and subscribe if you found benefit in this content and you want to see more content like this. Thank you. And for all cult survivors out there, you are not alone and continue the journey because this is a journey worth taking. Thank you.